I gotta release that video. I'll do it after the show. I might even do it on the show and then just release it as a as a clip <laughs> and then add in the video to it. You know what? That's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. So let's talk about um, my, my DJ journey that I've had so far. It's been good. I started on January 1st. I did my one week, which was actually two weeks. And then a couple of weeks went by, didn't really have a chance to, to shoot the video, and I didn't necessarily know if I wanted to do it every single week. I've still been using Beat Junkies, but I got, I got shot down the rabbit hole where I was using, <laughs> I wanted to learn about the flare. So the one click and the two click flare. And so I started looking at that. And in my previous video, I mentioned that um, one of the DJs did a really, really cool trick. So I've been looking for that and I found out it was the boomerang. So I started working on my flare. You can see it in my actual video for the one month where I can do a flare and the two click flare. So that's good. Uh, still slow, still working on my timing. And now I'm on to the boomerang and the boomerang, uh, the, the boomerang, it's, it, it's funny because Every scratch that you do, like every scratch, when you first do it, your brain doesn't want to do it. Your brain literally disconnects from it because a lot of the, the movements might be counter counterintuitive. Like maybe, you know, the record's going this way, but you're going this way or the record's going this way and you're going this way. And then you have to like pull it back. So there's a lot of little things that you need to do. The one click flare um, was, was easier because it feels a little bit like, like the same actions of a chirp. It's just almost like a slower moving chirp. The boomerang, however, is a different, it feels different because you have to do almost a reverse. You have to go, you have, basically you go have to go in and then you have to flip it on the, on the second pass and go out. There's six individual sounds for the boomerang. So I've been working on that. I've been utilizing uh, this guy, and I used a little bit of uh, Beat Junkies, but I didn't I didn't really love the way they broke it down. Because sometimes it's not really about the movement. It's about connecting another movement with what they're telling you. Because like the boomerang, uh, when they were like, oh, okay, it's a slice. You're like, oh, okay, I, I, I can do that. And then it's a stab. Oh, okay, I can do that. Now put it together. Oh, okay, I, I can't do that. But over time, you can do it. So uh, I've been working on that and uh, it's getting easier and easier to like understand scratches. You know, when, when you first start doing it, nothing makes sense. But now you're like, okay, I understand what they're doing. Now I just have to put it into practice and actually improve upon uh, what I'm doing here. It, it's getting there. It's a work in progress. The, the biggest issue for any any DJ is always the same. It's speed. You, you, you can get it at a slow pace, but the moment you start introducing speed, that's when you fail. So that's, that is just my focus. And it's just practice. It's always practice. Just practice, 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 and you'll, and you'll get better.
I was watching yesterday. Uh, L35 was on a show where they were just, it was a, it was a scratch cipher basically. So I was watching four guys that were all amazing. And it was funny because I'm in the stream and I'm like, Hey, this is dope, whatever. And the guy's like, Hey, you should come on next week or come on the week after. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm not where these guys are. And he's like all levels welcome. And I'm watching this stream and I'm waiting for like a lower level to come on. I never saw one. I never saw one, but uh, I may get on. Maybe I'm not sure yet for the only reason to get over my mental um, stage fright. I don't have stage fright for anything. I've been performing forever, but for whatever reason, anytime something is like hyper technical, um, like scratching is, um, you, uh, I don't know. My brain doesn't work. So if anything, that would, that would help me, uh, get over that so I could relax because scratching, uh, a lot of it, most of the stuff, most of the problems that you get is because you're not relaxed. The best scratch DJs are super, super relaxed. So I need to get there and, uh, and I will. So maybe I'll do those just to kind of get over the, okay, I did it. Now let's move on. And it wasn't like there was like, you know, hundreds of people. There was like 25 people chilling. Just like if you were at like Nam and you're at a scratch cipher, it's like 20, 25 people. And, but they're the most loyal 25 people you'll see. So I think I'm gonna do that. But I sent a, a clip of my, um, of my video. I recorded it and sent it to him. Like, am I on the right path here? <laughs> Because L35 is really good at the boomerang. And so I, um, I sent it to him like, am I on the right path? That's all I want to know. You don't have to like, you know, give me too much. And he was like, nope, you're on the right path. This is what I would recommend doing. So, you know, it, it, it helps. And um, you, you need some outside perspective sometimes. You can't just do everything on your own. Sometimes you have to ask somebody, am I doing it right? Because you can do it and you can look at look back at it yourself and think, I'm doing it right. And then you show somebody else and like, oh, move your hand this way. Oh, keep the scratch a little longer. Oh, they're like all these little things that you won't see on your own. Because two reasons. One, it's you. And two, because you if you if you're learning how to do something, you're not you're not skilled enough to say if it's right or wrong. So that's where we are.